Hey there, Twisters. So for today's video, we're ranking all 16 teams that are currently in a playoff spot by how badly they need to win the Stanley Cup. I made this video last year, but this one's gonna be a bit different. I'm gonna weigh some factors like the age of certain key performers, free agents for the upcoming off season, right? Some of these guys might be pricing themselves out and might test the open market. We'll look at long-term injuries going into the playoffs, salary cap situation, of course, a couple other factors. But one thing that I wanna make clear here is that this isn't about Stanley Cup droughts or the pressure from the media or for the fan base so much. It's about the team itself more because really, I'm sure that a lot of you out there could argue that your team needs to win the Stanley Cup the most. And also at the very end of the video, I'll talk about this a little bit later on. Check this out right here. We have new merchandise featuring the mascot of Twisted Rister Hockey, Cortana. You can see the link in the pinned comment down below or the video description that is available for purchase right now. It's recolored for all 32 teams. I'll talk about that more at the end of the video, but support the channel. All right, so let's get into this. So the team that I think needs to win the Stanley Cup the least or has maybe the least pressure within the team itself, I would say it's the Philadelphia Flyers. And I think a lot of people out there would agree with me. This team is really ahead of schedule. We had no idea that they be making the playoffs and I know they've kind of slipped a little bit recently and the Red Wings are still on their heels but they've been able to I think get up when they've been punched in the mouth and John Tortorella has done a wonderful job with that team now some people might say his shelf life is pretty short but I still think that the core of these players they're only going to get better. Connect me in his prime. You look at Owen Tippett's season the goaltending's held up for the most part pretty well despite Carter Hart not being on the team. And yeah, most of these players are under contract next year. So I think they're in a good spot. And I also think that from a salary cap situation, they're doing a better job recovering from some of their poor deals before that. All right, and 15, Nashville Predators. Again, another team that a lot of people weren't expecting to be succeeding at the level that they are right now. And the thing with them is that they do have some more veterans than the Flyers, players like Ryan O'Reilly, Tyson Berry's still on the team. I just think of somebody else in his 30s like that, but they still are ahead of schedule. They have some younger players who are going to be part of the core more going forward. The cap situation next year still looks pretty good. They even will free up some contracts from guys like Zucker. Well, Barry's gonna be one of them, Carrier's another one, and um, Bovillier, there we go, that's the guy. So the thing is, is that they'll be able to spend if they want to, but they don't, they're not under pressure to do that just yet. I don't think the Barry Trotz regime is looking good early on. All right, number 14. This one, again, this might cause some controversy, but it's not about Stanley Cup droughts. So 14th, I have the Vancouver Canucks because this is their first year as a contender, a truly successful team. Players who are in their prime, who are essential to this team, Thatcher Demko in goal, Quinn Hughes, you know, these guys are in their mid at, at the very latest, like 27 years old. Brock Besser, 26 years old, has, has 36 goals at the time that I'm producing this. You also have, of course, Elias Pettersson locked up long-term. The cap situation, kind of like I mentioned with Philly, has improved over the course of the last year or two. So Patrick Alvin gets some credit there. Elias Lindholm is an unrestricted free agent. So some people might say, well, this team should be stacked with him in the lineup, but they were really good before they even acquired him. They're in pretty good shape for a decent Stanley Cup window with those players in their prime. All right, 13th. This is a team that is currently under the leadership of an interim head coach, Jim Hiller, and that is the LA Kings. So the Kings, I think that they're kind of ahead of schedule with sort of how they decided to retool their team. In just three years, they turned into a perennial playoff team, still with Andrzej Kopitar and Drew Doughty and the leadership there. So I think they wanna still get a Stanley Cup for those guys, but you have contributors who are going to even play a bigger role going forward, like Jordan Spence and Brant Clark on defense, and Quentin Byfield already has had himself a breakout year. Kevin Fiala is still in the prime of his career, Trevor Moore, Philip Dano. So I think that they still have enough weapons going forward. Curious to see what happens with the goaltending situation. But again, Rob Blake and his crew there in hockey operations should be pretty proud with where this team is right now. And they should have the optimism that it could get better. All right, 13th, another team that might be under a little bit more pressure than I'm crediting them for here, but I've got the Avalanche. They won, of course, the Cup just two years ago, and they're doing this without Landis Gog this year, but I still think that they have a good Stanley Cup window because they have players in the primes of their career still. And of course, Makar is only 25 years old. 
he'll be most likely a Norris Trophy finalist this year. So I still think that they're in good shape, even if they can't make a completely deep run this year and win the Stanley Cup. The salary cap situation does look pretty good. Makar is a steal, I think, at 9.5 million. They will have to sign Casey Middlestat in the offseason, but he's a restricted free agent, so I imagine they can come to a decent deal for him. Well, anyway, in 11th, I have the Winnipeg Jets. So this core is also in the prime of its career, so that's wonderful. You've got maybe the best goaltender in the NHL and Connor Hellebuck, so he still has good shelf life there. Shifley, Ehlers, Connor, you have some good supporting cast members that came over from the uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. Now, I like what they did getting to Foley and Monaghan through trades this year. Those guys are probably going to command higher salaries over the next couple of seasons just based on what they've um, done this year. But I still think that the cap situation is going to be fairly favorable for the Jets. I, they might have a casual tier or two, but they still have players who can contribute at a very high level for them. Okay, in 10th, I've got the New York Rangers. Now, Peter LaViolette in his first year with a team has a lot of success. You look at what he did with Philadelphia back in 2010. They went all the way to the final just completely unexpectedly. 06 with the Hurricanes, they won the Stanley Cup. And this team has been mostly dominant over the course of this whole season. First team to clinch a playoff spot. So they still have players performing at a very high level in their 30s. I don't really see that falling off by a ton when you look at someone like Zibanejad or Panarin. You still have other players approaching the primes of their careers like Adam Fox, Keandre Miller, love that guy. Uh, Ryan Lindgren, hopefully he's 100% for the playoffs. And of course, Igor Shosturkin in net. So I do think there's pressure on them to at least get deep into the playoffs with the season they've had so far. But I have to give the front office some credit here. Chris Drury has done a good job managing the salary cap situation. I also like how they brought in Alex Wenberg. And really comparing that to last year, I think they've been more efficient with their resources this year. And that helps prolong the Stanley Cup window, if you will. Okay, ninth. Now, this is a little bit more realistic. I don't expect this team to win the Stanley Cup, but really, I don't see their situation getting better next year, and that's the Capitals. And age, of course, is a huge factor here. And the reason, a huge reason why this team is in position that they are right now, technically third in the Metropolitan, is one, because of the play of Char uh, Charlie Lindgren, right? Just uh, a backup goaltender, if that, for a majority of his career. And Ovechkin has caught fire. Not a whole lot of weapons behind him. Maybe a step forward next year for a guy like uh, Connor McMichael. But the Caps, they have basically this whole roster coming back next year. They won't have as flexible of a salary cap situation, but they're still eating $3.9 million of Kuznetsov's salary. So it's kind of like, all right, with some aging veterans on this team, John Carlson, TJ Oshie, can this team have something in them that we weren't expecting? I would think that they have to get that done this year or get really creative with how they're going to make trades and uh, augment their roster in positions that they need. All right, now an eighth is a team that, of course, when we talk about the fans and the media, right, they would probably be at the top because it's been, you know, a while, <laughs> the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I have them in eighth because even though, of course, there's going to be a lot of pressure, they still have three top players in their prime, right? The core four. Tavares has experienced a bit of a drop off, but as long as you have these three players, you're going to be competitive to make the playoffs. And I say that because the Atlantic division, eventually there will be a change in the standings, but still those bottom four teams have stayed there for quite some time. Now with the Maple Leafs, Brad Tree Living is just in his first full year as the general manager there. So I don't know how much he wants to really tear things down in the off season if the Maple Leafs don't make a deep run. I've been learning that for hockey and also for football, I've been following my Minnesota Vikings in the off season, it does take multiple years for a GM to really architect their vision, to be able to correct mistakes regarding contracts. So I do think that there's an interesting juxtaposition between what tree living should envision long-term and also what Sheldon Keefe's shelf life should be. Should this team not make a deep run? There's going to be a, a whole lot of rebuilding in the bottom six in the off season, lots of free agents or even the secondary scoring for that matter. So there are some questions there, but again, with those core performers, there's no reason why this team can't be competitive going forward in seventh. I, this is a really interesting team to talk about here. It's the Dallas stars. You have this mix of older players, guys in their mid thirties, like you have Joe Pavelski's going to be 40 this year. Uh, Tyler Sagan, Jamie Ben, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Suter also approaching 40. Uh, Chris Tanev will be a free agent. And then you have these younger players who are also making a huge impact on this team, like Jason Robertson, Wyatt Johnston, Logan Stankoven. I love, you know, seeing him called up this year. Uh, Thomas Harley, Jake Ottinger. I know I'm forgetting somebody else. Um, I think Haskinen's not even 24 yet. So it's kind of like you want to win for those veterans 
and yet you think that you have a core of players who are going to lead the way in the near future. I think that's the case with Dallas. So really, I didn't know where to put the stars here because I think that they'll have a decent Stanley Cup window going forward as long as they're not going to overpay for some of these younger players when they're due for a contract extension. So I've got them in seventh, but let me know your thoughts. All right, in sixth, I have the Boston Bruins. So the Bruins are trying to avenge what happened in the first round last year. And that's exactly what happened in that transition from 2010 to the 2011 playoffs when they won the Stanley Cup. Now with them, I still think that they need that bona fide top six center, that number one center. Although I'll credit them, you have players like Morgan Geeky and Pavel Zaka who've stepped in and who've done a good job. Charlie Coyle's had a really good season for them as well. So I think that with this system, that they can still be a successful team. Jeremy Swayman, his contract's gonna be an interesting one. He's a restricted free agent. Will he warrant the contract of a number one goaltender, a contract you might see with Sorokin or Shesterkin or someone like that? Marshawn is still performing at a high level, but he's getting a little bit older. He's 35 right now. And also, I kind of I kind of wonder here if they're not able to make a deep run this year, what happens with Don Sweeney? He's been there for quite some time. He's done a good job. But this team under Jim Montgomery is they're succeeding too much in the regular season to where if they can't win a playoff round or two, I don't know, there might be a casualty to this in the near future, but let me know your thoughts, of course. All right, in fifth, I've got the defending Stanley Cup champion, the Vegas Golden Knights. And again, this is one where I'm a little uncertain here because we don't really know what this team is going to be in the playoffs, right? Should they get Mark Stone and Tomas Hurdle? God, that feels weird to say. This team could be just as deadly as it was before, really. The offseason is even more intriguing, I think, because of some of the pending free agents and guys who won the Stanley Cup with them last year. A couple of players who are part of the original team, the Misfits year, Jonathan Marcheseau, Will Carrier, uh, Alec Martinez will be an unrestricted free agent. Chandler Stevenson, one of the most underrated forwards in the NHL. Noah Hannafin, uh, who they acquired at the trade deadline, a 27-year-old. Will he want that eight-year contract? Anthony Mantha also acquired at the trade deadline as well. So, Marcia so is probably the big name here in the sense that he's been there since the beginning, 33 years old, but he's put up 38 goals. So he's going to expect a pay raise and there are going to be some teams on the open market who will absolutely be curious in his services. So it's kind of like, all right, is this a last hurrah for a couple of core players to this team? All right, in fourth, I have the Tampa Bay Lightning. So with them, the big injury here is Mikhail Sergachev. Braden Point and Victor Hedman are expected to be in the lineup tonight, so I assume that they'll be all right going into the postseason. But really, the pressure's on the Lightning here because even though they want to keep him, Steven Stamkos is a free agent at the end of this season. And Breezeball said that he wants to keep Stamkos, but what is the price point going to be? How is that going to have an impact on how this team builds out its depth? I still think they need some more help on defense. And really with the Lightning this year, I think another big question mark is, is Andre Vasilevsky, is, is this the Vasi that we can expect going forward? I know he had the back injury this year, but um, he just hasn't looked anywhere near himself and himself. And I, I just don't know if he's going to just flip a switch in the playoffs. And then of course, what that's going to mean as he gets into his thirties starting next year. Okay, now we get into our top three. Now, my bias is gonna show a little bit here, but I'll do my best to explain my reasoning. So in third, I have the Oilers. Now, they're in their first year with Chris Knobloch as their head coach. 39-14-3, I don't think I updated that for the last game, but really there's a better opportunity for the Oilers to make a deep run this year. I'm not saying I expect them to get there, but you've got the prime of McDavid and Dreisaitl right now. You have lots of great supporting cast members, Zach Hyman, 50 goals, Nugent Hopkins, 100 points last year. You have Evan Bouchard contributing on defense. The goaltending has been better this year. I still think the opportunity is there because for one, we don't know what we're gonna get with the Vegas Golden Knights. And two, the Avalanche, maybe not quite as strong as they were in 2022. Those are just a couple teams that they might have to go through. The Canucks are gonna be an interesting one for Edmonton as well. But I think that internally, they, they feel that they have that sort of opportunity. And again, they're responding well with Chris Knobloch as their head coach. The one drawback with Edmonton is that going forward, there won't be as much flexibility with their salary cap situation. I know the cap is gonna rise for every team, but there are some contracts that might not age particularly well for them. Evander Kane's already experienced a drop off. Darnell Nurse's contract isn't quite warranted. So 
I don't know if Edmonton's going to be a much better team going forward unless, for example, the goaltending with Stuart Skinner just reaches a different level. And as for my top two teams, these are my second and third favorite teams in the NHL. So I just wanted to point that out there. So in second, I have the Carolina Hurricanes. So I chose them to be this high because they actually might be the biggest casualty of free agency going forward. So first of all, I don't know about other coaches, but Rod Brindamore's contract expires at the end of this year. He's done a magnificent job there, but what happens if, for example, they get bounced in the first round? So I think about that, um, even though I, I can't imagine the players not wanting him to come back, and that could certainly influence things. But you have, of course, Jake Gensel, who you traded for. Will he get that long-term extension? And then you have Ter Tevo Teravainen, who's been a mainstay in that core. He's a UFA. Martin Natchez, who they've gotten at just $3 million. He's an RFA. Seth Jarvis, who's had a great season, he's an RFA. I imagine that he'll get a good contract going forward, especially with the defense with Brett Pesci and Brady Shea, players who could earn more money in the open market, I believe. I just think that it's going to be hard to keep some of these players around going forward, especially if a guy like Natchez or Jarvis wants that longer term deal. So that's why I think for the Canes, it's a must win year for them. But in first, I have the Florida Panthers. I, I know they've been on a bit of a slide lately, but from what I've seen, this is still a very complete team. This is their best season ever, but there are some big factors at play here as we talk about the Stanley Cup window for Florida. They do have prime performers right now like Barkov, Verhage, and Kachuk. So that's good for prolonging the window. But Sam Reinhart now up to what, 51 goals? He's only making $6 million this year, and we'll see what kind of contract he'll be asking for in the offseason. They don't want to overpay for him. Bill Zito's done a pretty good job with contracts, but that one's going to certainly make a dent in things for them. You also have to consider Brandon Montour at only $3.5 million. I would imagine he still gets a pay raise in the prime of his career. You got to also consider that Sergei Bobrovsky's 35 years old. He's had a really good season overall. He's been a, maybe a little bit overplayed recently, and his postseason last year was magnificent up until the final. So it's kind of like, what is his shelf life? Is Spencer Knight going to be willing to take the reins at some point? So that's why I got the Cats at one. So what do your rankings look like? Maybe know, let me know your top five and stick around for more coverage of the NHL season, except I got to make sure that I plug in my merch store. So once again, we've got merchandise available now featuring Cortana here. And that logo has been recolored in, in the store for all 32 NHL teams, even some defunct teams. We've got 40 different options just for the logo alone. We have all kinds of products there. We've got t-shirts, we've got hoodies, we've got women's clothing, kids clothing, toddler clothing. We have shirts for your pets. So for your favorite woofer or kitty cat out there, make sure you grab a twisted wrist or shirt and support the channel. We've got pint glasses, coffee mugs, maybe a couple other things there as well. There's absolutely something for everybody and how about this one guys if you become a member at the mvp level the ten dollar level even if you just have one month of an mvp membership guess what you get a code for 25 percent or excuse me 20 percent off in the twisted merch store and that lasts forever support the channel see the pinned comment down below or the video description and get yourself some twisted wrister merch we've got something for everyone there and man i'm so happy with how this turned out and so is cortana for that matter we'll have to order her a pet shirt really soon actually i'll get her a couple of them anyway guys thanks so much for hanging out with me here make sure you leave a thumbs up and uh, follow me on social media in the meantime you can see the video description down below for more on that all right twisters i appreciate you tuning in i'm nick and i'll catch you later ciao